Hello and welcome. Today I'm making a very simple and quick birthday card for my mother using the new Kitty Stamp and Cut set from Hero Arts. This is a small stamp set that comes with the coordinating dies there. It's usually a really good price point. It's only around $15. Uh, which is awesome if you're crafting on a budget. This was an add-on uh, that came with the September Hero Arts My Monthly Hero Kit. Uh, and this was an add-on that I went with because I'm a big kitty lover and I thought that it was absolutely adorable. <laughs> uh, and my mother uh, is, an, is a tea drinker now. That's the Hero Arts Kit. My mother's a tea drinker from coffee per her doctor's orders. And she also loves kitties, so I thought this was perfect to make her... Uh, birthday card this year. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm recovering from a cold. <laughs> I'm doing my best to do this voiceover in one go here. So I'm going to uh, stamp the little kitty out on some white cardstock here. I'm going to do some alcohol coloring. It's a brand new stamp, so I'm going to have to stamp it a couple of times, but I did cut quite a bit of the footage out of this video so that we can try to keep the video short. I'm going to be using my favorite things, Extreme Black Ink, which is an alcohol safe ink. Uh, for my coloring, I'm going to be using my Spectrum Noir markers. You can see them there a little bit on the left, and we'll get a close-up a little bit of the colors that I used. Uh, here we go. My favorite alcohol markers. <laughs> my mother's uh, One of my mother's favorite colors is red, so we're going to make this kitty in a red teacup. Uh, and a gray tiger kitty because her kitties are gray tigers. I cut a lot of the coloring footage out of here. Not only is it just, it's lengthy. Uh, my coloring is very basic, usually just one or two color blends. That's it. I'm not going for anything perfect. Uh, but the glare coming in from the window is pretty, pretty high and it makes it a little bit hard to see uh, what I'm coloring anyway. So you guys have all seen coloring before. <laughs> we do actually have new blinds that were just installed. So there's a window to the left of where I'm filming here. It was enough to cut out the sun we we do have curtains on order they're probably not you know made to order curtains they're probably not going to be here for a couple of weeks so hopefully when those come and <laughs> those can help block out some some sunlight so we're just finishing up the little teacup here I did uh, make a couple of mistakes and go outside the line a little bit so in a moment I'm going to take a white gel pen and I'm going to use it to put a little a couple of details on the teacup and also to cover up some of my my boo-boos. <laughs> I'm sure that my mother won't notice. She's a, a big supporter. <laughs> anyway, so a couple of little details there. And then I'm going to take the coordinating die that comes with the set. And I'm going to die cut that out very quickly using my cuddle bug. And I'll show just a, a moment of that. Cut out a lot of this footage as well. You all have seen die cutting before. You don't need to see... Uh, too much of this and just get the cuddle bug out of the way and there's my little die cut super cute there's a couple of little floral images in here as well uh, but I'm going to use those a little bit later to um, heat and boss on the background for some watercolor I'm going to make my own background for this uh, but before I make the background I want to get my sentiment heat embossed onto some watercolor paper I'm going to do a ink smooshing technique uh, but I do want to get that sentiment stamped out first. Uh, heat embossed. I'm going to use uh, Versamark clear ink and some gold embossing powder. And the birthday sentiment that I've selected uh, says, Have a terrific birthday. I'm nothing if not one for a pun. <laughs> <laughs> I really enjoy this little set. It has an amazing like five or six different sentiments within that tiny little set. Uh, so it really does go a long way. I'm just putting these things in my little stamp positioner. Probably didn't need some of this extra footage. <laughs> you, Everybody has seen heat embossing before. Nothing special going on here. <laughs> right on the left here a little bit, Um, you can kind of see two of the colors that I'm going to use to work with my ink smooshing background. My mother's other favorite color is the color peach. Um, and there's a story behind that. She loves those peach blossom candies that you can only get at Christmas time. She's always loved them. It's sort of the family joke that we all try to get her a couple of cans of them every year and she makes them last all year. So peach and red are her favorite colors. So I'm going to attempt to do 
an ink smooshing background or something that I think is going to come out looking peachy. Um, and it doesn't really, <laughs> at least over the whole card anyway. I thought that I would use Tattered Rose and I think that Squeeze Lemonade Distress Oxide. And I thought the two of them together might make a muddy little peach color. And it doesn't so much, but the Tattered Rose does kind of look peach um, on its own. So it ended up it ended up working for what I needed it to work with, but I'm going to have to work a little bit harder at, at trying those out. Uh, I wanted to use a couple of the flowers from the kit just to help with my background a little bit. So here I am just stamping the small and the medium sized onto my background. And I'm going to just heat emboss those in white on top for a little bit of distress resist, and then I'll go in and hand paint them later. So here I am just smooshing my... Um, distress oxide getting it wet and I'm going to take the watercolor paper and just put it face down and start wriggling it in there this actually took a while they say uh, just keep going and put layer and layer and layer and layer and layer and don't worry you've not ruined it you just haven't you haven't put enough ink on it yet if, if you don't like the way that it looks so I did cut a lot of this footage out because it did actually take a long time but this is pretty much it um, <laughs> and then I would go and heat and boss it I'm not heat emboss it, but dry it with my heat tool um, and then put another layer on top of it. And you can kind of see how some of the uh, tattered rose kind of looks peach. I thought that it looked nice. It just, it didn't come out the way that I had thought that it was going to come out. I liked it. It just wasn't what I was going for. <laughs> and that happens a lot. Um, I always have this idea in my head of how I want a creation to look like and it's just it's the pulling it off part that's a little bit of a problem but I think it's peach enough that my mother will know that that's what I was trying to do <laughs> so I'm just kind of drying it with my heat tool um, in between and it, it, it does have some really interesting layers but definitely needed to make sure that it was really nice and dry before I uh, before I did too much with it <laughs> beyond that I'm just kind of dabbing off some of the extra and then I'll dry it off again. So I ended up with these um, white heat embossed flowers on here that had obviously resisted the background technique and I wanted to just put a little bit of color into those flowers because I thought they were really cute. So I was thinking some red flowers to match the red teacup might be nice and just pulled in a little bit of blue in there for the center of the flowers. So I'm just going to do some watercolor painting with Distress Oxide ink. Nothing fancy, nothing fun. There really isn't even any shading or anything. I, I literally just wanted the flowers to be red. And the yellow slash peachy background that I had made was light enough that I didn't have any issues getting the red to show up. So I just went over with a little fine tipped watercolor brush and painted all the little petals and the little blue thing in the middle of the flower. Uh, and that's how I kind of pulled off the background. And I really liked the, the way that it had come out. It is pretty simple. I probably, under normal circumstances, this card is simple enough that I probably wouldn't have done a video on it. But I am still learning how to edit videos and do voiceovers and stuff. So I've been trying to film and pull stuff together for all of my projects. <laughs> uh, so here you are. You're, you're one of my, my test victims with my work. I like to think if you don't like it, then don't watch it. <laughs> so there we are uh, with the background and I'm just gonna clean up a little bit. This glass mat is super easy to clean up. You just spray a little water on it, a little paper towel, and then that's it. It's completely clear and you're ready to start working again on another, another project. And now I need to get the kitty mounted on there and I'm going to use some of my glue to put the kitty on there. Or just figuring out my spacing anyway. The watercolor paper is bigger than the front of the card, so I know I need to cut it down. I'm just kind of figuring what edge I'm going to cut it down from. <laughs> the kitty is super cute. Uh, so in my stash, I found that really neat holographic red paper there, and I thought that would be super fun to mat behind the card just to kind of give it a little bit of a, a shimmer, a little wonky shimmer from the outside. I thought that would be fun. So I'm going to go ahead and take my double-sided tape. And today I'm using um, the double-sided tape that you get from Joann's and the dollar bins from Ms. Sparkle and Company. And just kind of, uh, uh, I usually use that for, <coughs> excuse me, I'm so sorry. I am recovering from a cold that has moved down into my chest. Um, I do tend to use those uh, quite often on personal projects. The tape works great. 
and I've just kind of matted uh, my background to that red holographic paper and now getting it on a card and I've already figured out I had obviously off camera I cut the uh, the card the watercolor down to the size that I needed for the front of the card so now I'm just getting everything all put together and using my lawn fawn glue which I love to attach that kitty to the front where I had wanted to put it. And then to me, the card is not quite done yet. I have that really subtle shimmer that's coming from that tiny border uh, from the, uh, the white and the red, <laughs> the red uh, holographic cardstock that's in the back. So I decided that it needed a little bit more sparkle. So I went and <laughs> dug my way, clawed my way. We just moved, so we still have piles of stuff everywhere, uh, to my cabinet and got out my sequins. I don't have many red sequins left in this particular box. This is a box of sequins that got all mixed up together. So I am trying to use them up before I open up other boxes of sequins. So I'm just digging through and I'm pulling out a couple of red sequins and I'm I'm noticing as I'm doing this that I don't have many left. So <laughs> it is almost time to open up an actual pa uh, package of red sequins. And then I'm j I just picked out a couple to kind of balance out that shimmer from the back of the card and bring a little bit of sparkle to the front of the card and also using my lawn fawn glue to attach the sequins. I've never had any issue with lawn fawn glue with my sequins, they stay put. I used to use uh, the multimedia mat from Ranger, and I really loved that glue, but I had such a hard time keeping the uh, needle point clear. <laughs> I had such a hard time with clogging, but Lawn Fawn glue works great, and I've never had a clogging issue. So that is my completed card, and I will set it aside to dry overnight before writing a note to my mommy on the inside and getting that off for her birthday. I hope that you have enjoyed and are inspired. I did like that uh, ink background smooshing technique, so I look forward to trying that again at some point. Definitely check out the Hero Arts uh, September release if you're interested. Again, this was an add-on that came with that. I hope that you have enjoyed, and take care. I will talk to you another time. Bye!